Hello mate, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be taking a look at reimagining what Delve could be like in Path of Exile 2. This is going to be a four part series. We're going to go in depth. We've come up with tons and tons of ideas. Jonathan recently in a talk with Rakin, who is a Brazilian creator, was saying about the process of modernizing all the content for PoE 2 and bringing back leagues. And he said it's more than just, you know, imagining the art and animation processes. He said it's also about reimagining the mechanics, how they're going to fit into PoE 2 and how essentially they can match up to the hype that POE2 has around it and pushing the genre forward, what sort of new mechanics and systems can be added and that is the purpose of this series. So I had a few ideas but instead of jumping into this blindly, first thing I did was called up the man that I call the Crystal King himself and that was Jorgen, a very very well known Delve specific POE creator. We sat down for maybe three hours, we cooked up a load of different ideas, his thoughts and his perspective were invaluable. For the three of those fragments put together Together, that gives you accessibility to it, an exclusive Pinnacle Delve boss node. I've always wanted a node that means Nico comes with you. I feel like this is a segue into something more that the cart could become. It could be a mobile merchant, could provide you access to your stash tab. You know, we love our skill trees, right? Almost adding mm. potentially like a mini passive tree to the cart. I didn't say how many Jack and Cokes. We're up there tonight, so we're going to have a good conversation around Delve. If you want to go and watch that full talk, I'll link it here. But don't worry, because all of those ideas and things we cooked up are going to be present in this video and the following parts of the series. So in part one today, we're going to be taking a look at the core content loop from your in-map experience into the mines and then all the way to end game and some new ways of exploring the delve map. Then we'll have part two where we're going to take a deep dive into an entirely new mine encampment and with some base building elements in there, new ways to upgrade your car and much, much more. And then in part three, we're going to be specifically looking at some bossing ideas that we've come up with for delve all the way to a pinnacle uber all encounter. And finally, part four is all about crafting a new combined system between essences and fossils as well as a ton of other things like abyss items abyssal jewels and an entirely new way of looking at resonators but now let's get into part one of the series content <laughs> Alright, so I want to start off very quickly by outlining what I think is great and what I think has some opportunities for improvement for Delve. So for the good stuff, the main thing is that we just have a ton of content. There's loads of different biomes, nodes and fossils and mini bosses and bosses alike. And we have an infinite scaling system which offers an entirely new sort of way to play PoE and endgame. And for improvements, the main thing is going to be adding way more variety and depth to the systems and the content that is already there. So this is bosses and way more interesting bosses, as well as upgrade systems and interesting crafting options. Now let's take a look at what we've been cooking up. All right, let's start talking about the in-map content. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to give an overarching sort of design intention here, which is if you saw my incursion redesign, I'm a big believer that there is an opportunity to condense some of the similar league mechanics from POE 1, reducing the overall number of expanded content in POE 2 at the beginning and make room for lots of opportunities in the many years to come for the GGG devs to add some interesting new stuff there. So we are going to be consolidating Delve, Essence and Abyss in many different ways into this new unified Delve 2.0 system. So you can see the tags up in the top right. So fossilized monsters are how you're going to essentially be experiencing essence now in the game. So just like essence monsters, fossilized monsters are caught in large crystalline amber sulfate. You can see an example in the image here. You gain sulfite for each time you mine or click the fossilized monster. So you can click twice and get a little bit of sulfite or you can the third time release the monster and it's going to break free. These fossilized monsters will be empowered by fossils just like they were with essences and once you free them and kill them you're going to get the fossils that are associated with their mods and also get a large chunk of sulfite. So this just adds a bit more engaging gameplay than before where it was just a lump of sulfite on the floor and that's all it was. Then we've got fossil fissures. So this is a bit more of an advanced system which is bringing in abyss. So from T6 maps onwards, you can encounter fissures. You can encounter, there's a chance here, to encounter fissures that function like abyss fissures. After defeating the different stages and at the end, there will be a sulfite cavern that opens up. So once you enter the cavern, there's gonna be a fossilized mini boss encounter that will grant a huge amount of sulfite plus some azurite and fossils. Now this could be a single boss or it could be a little wave encounter or something Something like that. Okay, so that's how we're going to be gaining our soul fight when we're in our maps, but then what do we do with that? Enter the mine encampment and our favorite Nico. Afraid of the dark, Exile? You should be. 
the classic crazy character of Nico back from PoE 1 and the point of him really is to just explain the lore of the mine encampment and delve. You're going to have an entirely new way that you access all your upgrades and buy your dynamite and all this sort of stuff. But at the end of this video we'll be talking about end game and a sort of quest line expansion to an entirely new form of content and it's really there to come along with you on your journey as you delve deeper into the mines. All right, now we're at the core gameplay interaction with Delve, which is the Delve map. So the Delve map is going to be largely similar. You can see here on the left, we've got the same old PoE1 uh, Delve interaction. I think there could be some graphic elements and some UI updates that might just polish it a little bit. The only thing I would add as a nice quality of life is that if you hovered over the different kind of biomes, then it would give you a much better indication. It would tell you in game, these are the type of fossils that you're going to get from this area in a higher rate. And also here's the mods and stuff that you're going to be experiencing in the area. Now we're getting onto a whole new thing, which is Echo locators so echo locator is a new item that can be dropped in the game they're consumable and when used they reveal some of the fog of darkness around you at that depth on your delve map these can be dropped inside delve nico will offer a small number of these which refresh every 10 depth that you delve we've got a broad echo locator which is your most common example of this and that just reveals the fog of darkness in a large area around you where you're at on the delve map and these can be used at the cart whilst you are inside delve then you've got node echolocators. So these are things for searching out very specific nodes. You've got a sulfite locator, which shows a sulfite location within a large radius, or a gold locator, which shows a nearest gold node to you in the fog of darkness. So you imagine you activate one of these, and then as we can see on the sort of map here, it would then give you a sort of uh, revealed area specific to that node and a compass pointing you to where that is. So you can start to head in that general direction if you're really hunting for this specific kind of content. And Underneath that, we've got some boss echo locators, and these are things like the maze locator for a new boss we've created called the Shatter Hulk, uh, abyss locators to find your nearest leech, and then you've got crystalline locators to find the nearest all. So this is just empowering players to hunt down the content that they want to play, which I think is really important and just gives a little bit more autonomy and agency to each player and how they want to go about delve. Now let's talk about adding a little bit more engagement and depth like we were talking about going from node to node on your runs with the car. So random encounters on the left here. I wanted to add a series of different things that you could encounter with a small chance or you know varying different chances that would increase the engagement and the sort of spontaneity of these runs so it's not just the same thing running from node to node. So first up we've got abyssal fissures. As you travel through the mines players can randomly trigger abyssal fissures that open a new side path. The car gets stuck in the crack from the fissure and requires a short dedicated channel from the player to get it going again. This allows a player a choice if they want to explore the side area that's opened up from the fissure or if they'd like to just move forward and avoid it. These fissures branch through walls, creating new side areas that can contain fossil troves, fossilized monsters, mini bosses, and have a higher chance of dropping abyssal items. We'll talk about abyssal items in part four. Tunnel cave-in is the next random encounter. The player and cart get trapped in a tunnel cave-in. The cart activates a heat laser to begin melting through the rock. So whilst this is happening, the player must survive waves of enemies that are coming through the cave-in. We've got sulfite swarms. This is a bit of a wild fun one. A huge number of low-life sort of spidling, sulfite spidlings come cascading down the route, down the tunnel behind you. They have sulfite in their blood and so killing them will speed up the car as it sucks in the extra sulfite vapor. The idea is to have this fun sped up gameplay where you can fight the horde if you're powerful enough and gain extra sulfite from them because you get some of the sulfite yourself or run towards the car, allow them to come near you and kill them just fast enough to speed up the car and get away from the horde if they're overpowering you. It would need some balancing and some testing that kind of thing but I thought that could be fun. And then we've got a uh, cable car and river barges. So this was just to change up the, the vibe inside the biomes and the experience of going from node to node. And that is to have cart hooks, you know, on a cable car or river barges that you essentially the cart goes onto and it just sits static on that. And then the barge will be going down a river. The cable car will be going through a sort of network of cable car mechanical systems. And then you could add things like, you know, 
some uh, environmental design hazards. Maybe there's a thing we actually need to steer the car or maybe move the barge to move around certain things, which could be a fun different thing. Or if you move this way, then you go down a different path and end up at a different version of the node. There's lots of ways you could go with that, but if you wanted to keep it simple, it's just a different experience of traversing the mine and going through Delve content. Uh, and then we've got node types and the sort of node types that we want to talk about. So there is a ton of different node types inside of POE1 already. It's quite an expansive list, actually. And I think the idea just on the top right, you know, the returning node types would pretty much bring all of those back. I can't see why you wouldn't. The main thing would just be to update some of these encounters at the nodes. I think the most obvious one to me is the Azerite nodes. So it's great that you have different tiers and that adds some interest. But more than that, we want to add some more stuff instead of just having the same wave encounter every time. So some examples would be fighting a single Azerite Golem, a much more powerful single enemy, and maybe as you defeat it or as you get its life down, parts of it fall off and turn into crumbled Azerite on the floor that you can pick up. And then you've got things like a group of exiles, you know, another group of miners that are down in the delve. They've got Azerite in their backpacks and you have to fight them and then, you know, the more that you kill of them, the more you're able to take from the encounter. And then finally, I thought a fun one to add in there would be the that you just turn up to an Azerite node and then it's simply just a pile of Azerite. You don't actually have to do anything. And that could be, you know, a low chance encounter. It's just a really nice bonus when it happens. That could be fun. I think you could apply this logic to a lot of the existing nodes. But here's some new nodes that I thought could be really good to have. So the first one is uncut gem veins. So of course we're going to have, you know, we're going to have uncut buff gems that we've seen, uncut support gems, uncut skill gems, and maybe some other types that we don't know of yet. And then sulfite veins. So for those those players that want to stay inside of Delve a little bit longer and love Delve, then you can maybe path your way specifically to, you know, maybe not go directly the fastest route, but you're going to hit some sulfite veins on the way, go to some sulfite nodes and you get some extra sulfite. We're going to be talking about sulfite generators in the next part, which is another way to add more passive sulfite generation to your mine encampment. And now here's just a sort of cheat sheet that I've got of all of the different biomes that I would bring back and include so it covers most of them there's a couple that aren't in there and all of these have kind of underneath the top of their name you've got a sort of very specific kind of theming and enemy type and then you've got the fossils that are dropped in those areas so if you hover over these biomes in the Delve UI you would see these fossil types that are available to you and we've condensed the number of fossil types and sort of combine them with essences all will be explained in part four you got mini bosses and events and you can sort of see what I'm trying to do here. There's a couple of the larger new bosses mentioned, but each area would have a very thematic uh, boss encounter, lots of small boss encounters as well. These mini bosses that will be unique to those biomes like we have in POE1. And then you've got the biome mods. And I think it's really important that every biome have a series of mods, which essentially weakens you in that biome to a specific thing. So let's just say magma fissure as example. You're going to take 10% more fire damage from the monster monsters in there. Monsters gain a chance to ignite you whilst you're in there and then also you deal less fire damage to the monsters. And so you have a chance to then as you're going through the delve map maybe pick what your build is going to be really strong against, what it's currently weak against and it just forces the players to have a little bit more engagement with how they're going to navigate their delve. Now obviously some players that are incredibly advanced have really strong builds this isn't going to affect them and that's fine because they're being rewarded for that. And then just above my head, we have the gold biome. So the gold biome is a new biome type that is going to be very rare and you will encounter it from time to time as you go down into the depths. And you're just going to get a ton of gold. Uh, you're going to get a new type of very rare um, fossil drop, which is a golden fossil. And yeah, you get sort of extra increased uh, item rarity. You're going to get a load of gold from the mini bosses and different encounters there for all you gold hungry players out there in PoE 2. All right, and now for the last slide in part one of this four-part series, we're going to be talking about endgame and some endgame expansion ideas for Delve. So ancient bases, let's start up here on the left and talk about that. So let's say at four, 500 depth roughly, you find a large ancient base deep inside the mines. Once you defeat the mechanical defenders of it that have reactivated on your presence, you claim it as your own and have a second mine encampment. 
The base contains information, directions to other base outposts, which sets off a series of quests that will lead to you discovering more about the people who built them, new encounters, quests to find certain items, and at a certain depth, ultimately teach you about the lore behind all the liches and how they came to be. Once the quest chain is complete, you will understand how to use abyssal chisels to access the uber all fight. More on that in the bossing part. Base discovery rewards. So that's the concept, but what do you get from discovering these bases? Well, permanent delve upgrades. So each base you discover has a new permanent upgrade to be found. So something like improving your sulfite efficiency, azurite gains, and later on improving fossil and resonator drop rates. And then you've got an echo locator cache. So every time you discover one of these bases, you get a series of echo locators, which can help you find specific bosses and specific content, as we mentioned earlier. Now let's talk about new gameplay that this unlocks, okay? So you've got gates and caverns. So once you find one of these bases, you unlock the ability to activate delve gates. And delve gates are frames that you'll stumble across on your delve runs that you can now activate with the knowledge you've found. These gates lead to undiscovered caverns deep inside the delve map. Your cart cannot follow you into these areas. Once here, you have a limited amount of time to explore the area and the rewards are mostly azurite and fossils. So the idea here is that it's like a big wildwood area. So it's one big map that every time you go in through one of these gates, you're gonna be starting in a new location and mapping out more of that map. And once you've worked your way inwards, so you'll start out on the edges and then each time you get into a new gate, you're gonna have a chance to get a bit closer and spawn a bit closer to the center. So in the center of this map, there's gonna be an all encounter and once you've defeated all, then there's going to be a new seed which is generated as you go into your next gate and it'll be an entirely new map for you to explore, rinse and repeat. So this aims to offer some more granular and deterministic ability to farm all specifically if you choose to. And also there's mysteries to discover in these unexplored caverns. There's going to be rarer fossils that are going to drop at a higher rate inside these new unexplored caverns as well. Alongside this, we could add another fun element of gameplay where now you've actually activated these gateways or gateways go both ways and there's going to be an opportunity for enemies to come and siege your new forward bases that you've discovered or rediscovered. So these would work similar to settlers where you get a notification that your forward base is under attack. You go there and then defend it from a series of waves followed by like a mini boss or a lieutenant kind of encounter or maybe even you know all himself as you get deeper starts to attack your bases. And finally the other thing that I thought was really fun that they could add as a bit of an evolution would be community community challenges. So it's become a big thing in the community to follow the delvers every league, usually Shitstone Steve, as he delves deeper and deeper and we constantly get those yellow notifications telling us how far he has got. So why not bring everyone into this and make it a little bit more of a community thing? So the idea is, you know, like the vault pass, there's a kind of, you know, a tracker of how far you've got in the progression. Well, what if every league there was a sort of delve frontier tracker and you had things that were adding up everyone's collective depth levels and then putting them into like a community goal and at different breakpoints, you essentially get new unlocked things for everyone in the community. So this would be things like everyone who has engaged in delve at million depth gets all of their silos filled. So obviously the more you have in your silo capacity, the more this benefits you. Uh, then at two million depth, you have 100,000 gold and you gain an echo locator cache. Again, this is valuable to everyone, but also specifically to delvers with the echo locators. And then maybe, you know, 4 million depth is a number that's really hard to hit in a single league. And then maybe when you get there, everyone gets a unique delve themed MTX for the league, you know, something like a little miner's hat or, you know, who knows, you could have some fun with that. Just another little MTX thing to add, kind of like a challenge. All right, so that is gonna cover part one where we're talking about the core content. Next up we've got part two which will be coming out tomorrow and we're going to be taking a look at an entirely new way to upgrade your cart. Cart systems is really fun, there's some fun stuff in there. An entirely new way to experience building out your mining encampment and lots of new options there. Things like sulfide generators and a new UI that we've made for that. And then in part three we've got some boss encounters that we've designed, lots of cool rewards that you can be getting from those bosses. And finally part four is all about crafting, looking at new systems, combining essences and fossils into a unified crafting system, adding new base types, new item types, and an entirely new way to think about resonators. All right, friends, exiles, I hope to see you in part two. We're going to be weaving this in with our ascendancy design series that we're going to keep going strong with all the way up to early access. So tune into the channel, subscribe if you like this kind of content. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope to see you in part two. Ta-da.